Hello, 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 welcome back to the channel. So let's move on to the next unit right now, which is based on area between curves. So in the previous videos, we covered the concept of substitution. Now we'll use the concept of substitution with the concept of area between the curves in order to solve these type of questions. So in this question, in these type of questions, you basically are given two or more curves and you have to find the area between the intersection of those two or three more than two curves. So the basic idea is about drawing the sketch of those functions and identifying the area between the curves. And then based on the area between the curves, you have to identify whether it's easier to take vertical strips or it's easier to take horizontal strips in order to calculate the definite integral or the area between the curves in this case. So we'll do a very simple example. We'll do an example on vertical strips and we'll also do an example on horizontal strips so that you'll get a good idea about when do you have to use the horizontal strips and when you have to use the vertical strips. So in these type of questions, you can see that I'll go over the question first. So in this question, you have to write down a definite integral that would represent the finite area bounded by the curves y equals x cube minus x and y equals x for x greater than or equal to zero. So in these type of questions, you first have to identify the region between the curves so in order to do that, you'll have to sketch the graph of both functions on the same graph. And then based on the visual representation of both of these sketches, you have to identify the area, the finite area bounded by the curves based on the given condition. But before doing that, in these type of questions, you have to first identify the intersection points of both of these curves, which will give you a better idea about what is the area between the curves they are talking about. So in this question, you have to first identify the point of intersection in this case. So in order to do that, we basically equate the y values, right? We either equate the x values or we either equate the y values. That will basically give you the intersection of the curve, intersection of both of the curves in this case. So we know that in order to find the intersection of both of these curves, we'll just equate their y values. So it would be x cubed minus x equals x, right? In order to find the intersection values, the x intersection values. So to solve this equation, let's shift the x, this x to this side. So this would become x cubed minus 2x equals 0. I can take x common. So it would become x times x square minus 2 equals 0. So now in order to find the intersection points, either our x is equal to 0 or our x square minus 2 is equal to 0, right? So in this case, it either gives me x equals 0 or x square equals 2, which means x equals plus minus root 2. So now in this case, I have three intersection points, which are x equals 0, x equals plus root 2, and x equals minus root 2. But you know in this case, since in our question, we are only concerned with x values which are greater than or equal to 0. So we'll go with x equals 0, and we'll go with x equals root 2. And based on these intersection points, you'll get a clear idea by looking at the graph of what area you have to consider in order to solve this question. So now once you have identified the intersection points in this case, the valid intersection points in this case, according to the conditions given, you will move on to sketching the graph of this function and then identifying the area between the curve. So now we have to sketch the graph of x cube minus x and we have to sketch the graph of y equals x on the same graph, on the same x and y axis. So when you'll sketch the graph of x cube minus x, your x cube minus x will look like this. And then your y equals x, as you know, would sketch like this. I didn't explicitly cover the curve sketching in this case, but if you want to still get an idea about how we can sketch curves easily, I'll make a video on that as well. So in this case, you have y equals x cube minus x and you have y equals x. And now based on the x values which we are concerned with, the valid x values in this case, you see why we calculated the endpoints, why we calculated the intersection points in order to get the idea about the area we are talking about in this case. So if you have to calculate the area bounded by both of these curves, the area bounded between both of these curves, we can clearly see that this is the area they're talking about, right? Right? So this is the area which we have to calculate in this case. And you'll clearly realize in this case that it's not easier to calculate the area between these two curves 
in the trivial way that we used to do by taking the areas of rectangles by taking the areas of triangles or by taking the areas of familiar shapes that we know it's not a familiar shape that we know right so that is why we'll have to use definite integral and using definite integral will make your whole process much much easier in this case so in order to solve these type of questions once you have identified the area between the curve which is this area you'll see if it's easier to take vertical strips or if it's easier to take horizontal strips so in these type of questions if you want to know which approach is the best for solving the area between the curves by taking a vertical strip or a horizontal strip you can always follow this process that if you can clearly express your y values in terms of x just y equals something for one curve and y equals something for the other curve it is better to take vertical strips in this case but if it's the opposite case if you are able to represent x in terms of y easily then you'll take horizontal strips but you'll notice in this case that okay x equals y is fair enough we can we can consider x in terms of y which would be very easy but if i have to express x in terms of y in this case it would be very hard to factor out this equation and write this equation in terms of y right write x in terms of y so write something like x equals which is a function of y so in this case it it's very hard to convert this function into a similar looking expression like this right because i'll have to do some manipulations and factoring out in order to convert this equation which would represent x in terms of y right so that is why in this case we will take vertical strips so a quick overview again if it's easier for you to express y values in terms of x you'll take vertical strips and if it's easier for you to represent x values in terms of y you'll take horizontal strips don't worry we'll cover one more example of taking horizontal strips in the next video so stay tuned for that so now when you have clearly realized whether you'll take horizontal strips or vertical strips the next part is to identify the height or the width of the rectangles based on the strips that you're considering so if you are considering vertical strips right if you are considering vertical strips you'll take any arbitrary strip any arbitrary vertical strip between the area you'll take any arbitrary vertical strip in the area between the curves so for example they they took this vertical strip and based on this vertical strip you'll calculate the height of your rectangle so in this case you'll clearly notice that this is y equals x right and this is y equals x cube minus x right and i can always see that my y equals x is always above y equals x cube minus x in this case right in the area between the curves so in this case since i know that my x would be in this case since i know that my x would be always greater than or equal to x cube minus x so the height of the rectangle in this case would be simply the upper y value minus the lower y value right so that would be the height of my rectangle in this case which would be y equals x minus x cube minus x right this is basically subtracting both of those y values and since we know that our x is always greater than or equal to x cube minus x so that is why we know that this height would be always positive in this case right so this is the process of basically identifying the height of your vertical strip but if you are taking horizontal strip you'll basically consider the width of your horizontal strip right but since in this case we are considering vertical strips we'll take the height of our vertical strip you'll take any arbitrary vertical strip in the area and then based on that vertical strip you will calculate the height of your vertical strip so in this case we have calculated the height of a vertical strip let's not represent it with y let's represent it with h such that it does not confuse us with the y notation so now since we have identified the height of our vertical strip now we know that we have to consider these vertical strips from x equals 0 point to x equals root 2 point right if we keep on taking those vertical strips from x equals 0 to x equals root 2 we'll basically find the area under the curve right so now the final step is to just write the area under the curve in your definite integral notation so now since we have clearly identified our height of our vertical strips which is x minus x cube minus x in this case now since in this case we are taking vertical strips so we have calculated the height and in this kind of questions as you know when we are taking vertical strips our width is very small right so in this case if i'm taking the height of my vertical strips 
the width of my vertical strips would be infinitesimally small, right? Which would be dx in this case. So that is why we will write dx in this case. And since dx or dy gives us an idea about our endpoints, we know that we are varying our endpoints based on our x values in this case. And based on this, the x values in this case are from x equals 0 to x equals root 2, right? So the definite integral would be this with the endpoints from x equals 0 to x equals root 2. And that would be your final answer in this case. If you want to simplify it further down, it would be integral 0 to root 2 x minus x cube plus x dx. So this would be finally integral 0 to root 2 2x minus x cube dx. So this would be your final definite integral. That would be your final answer because in this question you only had to write down a definite integral. You did not have to evaluate the integral explicitly. So this is the basic idea about the area between the curves. Whenever you have to solve these type of questions, you'll first identify the endpoints and then you'll sketch the graph of both of the functions or two or more functions whatever functions you are given in the question, you will first basically sketch the graph of all those functions on the same graph and then based on the endpoints, you will identify, based on the endpoints and the given condition in the question, you will identify the region which is bounded between both of those curves or between your two or more curves and then based on that, you will either take vertical strips or horizontal strips based on the idea that we covered in the previous half of the video and when you will take the vertical or the horizontal strips, You'll for, if you're taking vertical strips, you'll take the height of your vertical strip. And in this case, you know, if you're taking the height of your vertical strip, your width of the vertical strip would be dx. And based on dx and dy, you'll basically identify your endpoints. And when you have all of this information, you'll express your definite integral in the correct form that you evaluated. So this is the idea about the area between the curves. Don't worry, we'll do a couple more problems in order to reinforce this concept. But for now, that's it for this video. Feel free to comment down if you have any questions related to that. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.